welcome to Let Me Know How It Is, a pop culture podcast about animation, TV, movies, comics, and all things geek. We're celebrating the one that started it all, Superman, just in time for the anniversary of Action Comics number one. I'm Zach Slater. I'm Frank Melman. And I'm Clifton. All right, so April is the anniversary of when Action Comics number one went on sale, so we're going to be celebrating 85 years of the Man of Steel in two parts. This is part one. We're going to review Action Comics number one, but we'll also cover bad guys. We'll list some classic Superman reads, and we'll also go over how and where we were first exposed to Superman. Um, I also have some fun mini questions I'll sprinkle in here and there about like our Superman preferences and little things like that. Um, but first, let's go over our Superman origins. How did you guys first find Superman growing up? Sure. For me, it was, I'd have to say, Super Friends was a big, a big one. Um, seeing Superman every Saturday morning. That definitely was was where I first saw him. That and the um, the Christopher Reeve Superman movie, the first one. I remember, you know, there really there really wasn't an opportunity to see like the old George Reeve show that mm-hmm. wasn't on, um, right. or the old like filmation Superman. So definitely for me, it was seeing Superman with the rest of the, of the Super Friends slash Justice League on Saturday mornings, and then really, um, you know, I really love <laughs> the the. Richard Donner, Christopher Reeve, Superman movie. Mm-hmm. Was it 78? I love that one. I mean, it's it's goofy in parts, but Christopher Reeve is Superman, and, and Mario Kidder is Lois. It's hard for me to shake those images in my head. Mm-hmm. I, I try to give other performances and other actors a fair shot, but for me, it's it's hard not to, to rev- you know, revert back to the mean on right. those on yeah. those characters. Just because I think that um, she's great, and he's so great as Clark, as well as, well as Superman. And just the physical mannerisms that he able, is able to like um, inhabit for both of them, that you can actually believe it'd be tough for people to realize he's both Clark Kent and Superman. Right. So, yeah, if I, I mean, I was trying to think if maybe there was, you know, a comic book place, you know, or a comic book, you know, point of origin for me. I mean, I had various comics and I knew who he was, obviously. And I know I remember I had old, like, early Justice League, like, and I'm talking like 70s Justice League stuff, but. Mm. Um, or random action comics, or random Superman, but I'd have to say it's more of those two for me, for my personal origin of where I really started really like, you know, dig the character and really sort of realize, oh, well, this isn't he's he's when, especially when he's played up against other characters, other super friends, or other other superheroes, mm-hmm. um, just how uh, special a character he is, and how much they would rely on him, and how much they look to him for like you know leadership and stuff. So I would have to say those two. Okay. Those happen kind of around the same time for you? Yeah, I think so. Because it was one of those things where I would, I mean, obviously it's easier to access something that's on, you know, once a week as opposed sure. to like going to the movies. But, you know, and my dad was, it was one of the things my dad and I had, um, my dad and, have a, and I don't have a lot of cultural touchstones. <laughs> we have some, but like one, like, you know, Superman's one of them, original Star Trek's another, um, that we sort of like, you know, fanned out over, you know, Superman's okay. one of things where my dad talked about you know every now and then getting a, you know get a chance to look at superman and enjoying superman so but i think it was more like i said those two things right interesting mm-hmm. interesting there that you brought up your dad with superman i'll get to that on mine <laughs> gotcha. Clifton, what about you now mine's quite similar to frank's same kind of generational touchstone as early as i remember like both super friends and the the christopher reeve movie were always there like from my earliest memories so it's i don't even remember exactly being introduced to the character i just remember those two things always kind of being there when i was a kid and so it's surely what my introductions were was one of those two things uh super friends or or the christopher reeves movies but i remember both of them like hand in hand because yeah super the christopher reeve movie was 78 as frank said and Super Friends had started in 73, which was, you know, just before my time, but then still, you know, running through nonstop through our childhoods. Mm-hmm. So that was definitely it. I'm trying to remember which one I probably connected to more. I probably connected to the movies a little more just because I liked the personality that Christopher Reeve brought to the character. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas in, in Super Friends, you know, it's a big ensemble. Not a, nobody gets a ton of time to shine out of all the characters. So I just like... I like the action in the cartoon, but just as far as what I think of Superman, it would have been the Christopher Reeve version just because he was so like, I mean, he's brought so much personality to the character and he's larger than life and and believable and Mm -hmm. genuine and earnest. So 
Yeah, I mean, those are my introductions to to Superman for sure. Okay, mine was um. Well, for my dad, the interesting thing was like my dad was never into like superheroes or comics or, or or anything like that. I remember, but like I clearly was growing up, and I remember asking my dad one time, uh, like, "Who's your favorite superhero, Dad?" I don't, I have no idea how old I was, and he just said like, like with no hesitation, just blurt like Superman, and I was like, "Whoa, mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's an interesting choice." Like, <laughs> right. you know, um, I think I do think he dug those movies when they came out. Um, mm-hmm. I was a little young for those, so mine. Um, my origin came on sort of, uh, 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 in a weird couple of things. So, uh, there was a Superman pop-up book in my house Ah, that was my brother's and got passed down to me. And it was, uh, I I looked it up since it was published in like 1979. So this was clearly in Supermania. Right. (laughs) I'm sure when this came out, Mm -hmm. um, but this pop-up book had everything in it. It was like the rocket from Krypton, all Mm -hmm. of his powers, like all of that stuff. So like, that's how I learned everything about Superman was that pop-up book. And my mom used to like, like, you know, like read it to me and, and stuff like that. But also, but when we got cable, my mom also let me stay up late to watch the George Reeves Superman on Nick at night on weekends. Ah, okay. And I was like, I loved watching those. Yeah. <laughs> um, so those were kind of my two, I don't know that I ever sat and watched the movie all the way through until, you know, very, very late. I don't know that I read a Superman comic till very, very late. So those were kind of my two, my two spaces. And then, and then, as I've said a million times on the show too, and then Superman, the animated series came out. And when I watched the pilot for that, like, like that's when I fell in love and I was hooked Mm. at that point. So Superman, the animated series strikes again. Everybody. So, yeah. <laughs> so again, like for these characters that, that we've been about since children, it's usually the multimedia aspect that gets us more right. so than than their comics, than their original format of comics. Because yeah, likewise for for me, I didn't read a Superman comic for a long time uh, mm. after, even though I had known the character my whole life. Yeah, I mean, mm. I was uh, no, I was probably nineteen. Yeah, maybe yeah, when was, I read my first Superman comic, right. like. It's yeah, probably you know? earlier than that, but yeah, I'm talking like middle school, high school, probably. Yeah. I, did, I definitely latched onto some other comics earlier before I went back to a Superman comic. Yeah. And I've read him in stuff yeah. also, like, you know, in Dark Knight and like Justice League stuff. But I think that's when I got like his first solo stuff. Right. I mean, it could have been a little younger than that, too. I may, I may have my years off, but yeah. But yeah, the um, power of movies, cartoons, everything else for these characters. It's always yeah. crazy. It strikes, it strikes hard always, yeah. <laughs> but I'm always fascinated. I'm, I'm always curious to see if that's what it is. That's why I ask those questions all the time. Mm-hmm. I want to know yeah. like, you know, if it is in fact like TV or, if, or you right. know, <laughs> nowadays, if it's, if it's the rare instances of like, no, no, I read this growing up. Love it. You know? <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I didn't really get like, I read, like I said, I had, had, you know, random, you know, action comics or, 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 uh, you know, issues of Superman from around that time. All the, the, you know, Kurt Swan or, or you know, uh, stuff that's written by um, Carrie Bates or uh, E. Nelson Bridwell, any of those guys, like all that, a lot of that early, like late seventies, early stuff, right around the time he, he becomes a TV reporter, <laughs> you know, when he's, <laughs> when he's at WGBS as right. opposed to, I think it's WGBS, where he's basically, you know, Clark's no longer the planet. They want to shake things up a little bit and, and, and give him that job instead. But I mean, I never really got, I would say probably I read, Hmm. Like regularly read Superman out of um, maybe like right after Crisis, like when Byrne took over, like when they had Man of Steel, the, Man the first, Steel, sure, the right. first Man of Steel. Yeah. Okay, I really got into Superman, but I mean, you know, I'd always liked the character. I'd read things here and there, but yeah, I think that from that point, because I was reading Wolfman was on uh, Adventures of Superman and Byrne was on the regular stuff, regular book, I should say, and then yeah, I read all of that stuff for a long time, and then when it became. You know, the triangle comics of trying to figure out how it all like flowed <laughs> from issue because right. they added what was it, uh, Man of Steel, I think was the other book. The Louise Simonson book was so you had like three Superman titles a month, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, and, and a lot of them had some like some good stuff going on, yeah, yeah, which well, I yeah, read yeah. after the fact. I know, you know, she's an important Superman writer, I think, yeah. You know? We'll get to creators and stuff like that too, like down the line, 
but yeah, like, uh, and, and just to bring it like over until today, like I, I don't read Superman all the time. I don't really read anything, uh, religiously. I say, I, like mm. I follow like kind of creators and if somebody's on an interesting book that I like, I'm, I'm more likely to read something that way than I am that, that I follow a character, mm. you know? But I always, I mean, like Superman and Batman are the two I'm always like keeping an eye on. And I'm always yeah. sort of like, I always kind of know what's happening in those books, even though I'm not reading it. Like, you know, I'm always just waiting for, for an opportunity to jump on. But yeah. Superman's one that like, you know, I need somebody with an interesting take. I need somebody that, that I know is going to be, I, I have no interest in reading somebody that's not going to be respectful to the character. Yeah. I mean, oddly enough, I would say that for me, it's like, I was thinking the more I think about it, I would say it's more like, I like Superman in Justice League. I like him in, um, like, uh, World's Finest with Batman, or I really like him in DC Comics Presents. So that was the ones that I really had more Superman appearances for the longest time rather than, than just Superman in action. Right. You know, I, I liked, I've talked plenty of times about DC Comics Presents and how it's, um, you know, Superman is kind of like that character that's a utility character that can fit anywhere mm-hmm. and be okay with any one. <laughs> and it was kind of like, even the characters in the stories would sometimes be self-referential and be like, well, it's going to be okay because Superman's here, <laughs> you know, yeah. even if they were an actual superhero to themselves. So that was always something I thought was kind of interesting about the characters. All right. First mini question. All right. It's an easy one, but uh, it's a classic. So, so, so we'll go and we'll, we'll you know, we'll get, uh, put our names on the record for where we stand here. Red trunks or no trunks? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as we'll talk more and, you know, about when we talk about action comics, number one, I, I'm a trunks guy. They're there from the beginning. Right. <laughs> okay. You know, they're there that, yeah. as, as they were intended by their creator. <laughs> <laughs> Clifton, what about you? I like the trunks more just because, I don't know, it breaks up the design a bit and, mm. and Superman more so than other characters without the trunks. I feel like it just looks like he's wearing long johns. So yeah. I like the the breakup of the the color mm-hmm. the, the blue with the red. Uh, so personally, like I just uh, I just kind of lean towards the trunks for that more so than anything else. Mm-hmm. Okay, I am uh, I'm gonna make it unanimous. <laughs> I'm a staunch. Uh, I'm staunchly in the camp of of uh, red trunks. Yeah. I think the breakup is very very important. And and what I say is I I don't think I've ever seen a design without the trunks that I thought looked good. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not trying to echo the classic in some way. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I feel like, like Brave New World, the Superman animated series, where like, I mean, he's in a cl- completely different costume. Mm-hmm. Okay, and and uh, that's fine. I have no issue with it because you're going for a different look. Right. But when you're trying to sort of like quasi ape the classic, but right. you, like, you leave the trunks off, I'm like, no, it's wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. And still it's wearing wrong. the belt with no trunks, and you're like. <laughs> Yeah. No. And the interesting thing to me is, um, I discovered this like really recently because we had that, the, the like 15 second teaser that came up for my adventures of Superman, which is a new animated series set to debut on adult swim. And you do get the red trunks, but you also, but they have like a redesign of the S on the chest. Mm -hmm. Right. And I like it. Like, I really like it. And it, and I never realized at that point, like how much more important the trunks are to me than the S logo itself. Mm-hmm. Like, like I don't care if you redesign the logo. <laughs> right. Apparently, but right. I'm looking at it now. Is the S logo like the Kingdom Come S, but in the red and gold instead of red and black? It looks yeah, a little like bit. That. It's, yeah, it, it looks, looks kind of like a a mix of things. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's a fun design. Yeah, yeah. I dig it. Yeah, when he's not wearing the trunks, it's the 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 line from Venture Brothers that Monarch says about night one, nice onesie dick. Is what I always think about. <laughs> it's a speed suit, right? Exactly. That's what it suddenly becomes when he's not wearing the trunks. So, so okay. So we all read Action Comics number one leading yes. up to this. We wanted to review the one that started it all, and uh, see what was there from the Superman mythos, like right from the start. So, mm-hmm. had you read this before? Yes. You had. Frank, you I, had. I had. Clifton, how about you? I don't think I had. I okay. was familiar with <laughs> like panels from it, and I kind of knew, I guess, reading about it, what was in it. Or I'd seen probably like page excerpts, but not the full, what turns out to be, it's a 14-page story, mm-hmm. is the first appearance of Superman in Action Comics back when 
you know, the comics were all the anthologies. So there's also like cowboy stories and like a boxing story, I think, later in this issue somewhere. I think, mm. Zatanna, I think Zatanna's dad is also in this one. Oh, really? Okay. I, that so. I yeah. remember. Yeah. Zatara. Yep. Zatara. Yep. So yeah, I hadn't read it before, but I, I do think it's interesting because everybody talks about Action Comics number one. Right. But nobody, I don't think, actually talks about Action Comics number one. <laughs> right. So I thought it would, I thought, yeah, I like the idea of, of, of actually reading, like actually reading what was in that very first story and, and what's still there and what came from it and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't, I'd certainly never read the whole thing before, the whole 14 pages before. Mm. I certainly thought I had read it before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then quickly, like two pages in, I was like, I don't remember any of this. <laughs> so I don't think I actually did read it. Right, uh, right. Which surprised me. I'd been in comic, uh, uh, you know, I've been in the comics my whole life. And yeah. I, like, I thought for sure I must have yeah. read it. The, and then it hit me too, though. I'm like, I don't even have it reprinted anywhere. <laughs> like, I was looking at my trades. I'm like, wow. Like, I don't, like, weirdly, like, I don't have the greatest Superman stories volume one. I have volume two. <laughs> you know like I'm like wow i don't even have it right so i thought is it in the, the secret origins book i lent you is that not in there i couldn't remember i think possibly but i mean i didn't read it then okay <laughs> you know <laughs> gotcha okay so um we were in flash mode at that point i remember yeah we were reading a lot of flash stuff but yeah anyway so what'd you guys think it was interesting Knowing what I know of what the the origin was supposed to be, like the like originally, like Superman was kind of like a bald futuristic scientist villain at one point when they first put the first like the first strip out for it. Okay, so it's kind of, it's kind of a, a weird you know it was odd that it was you know the idea that the it's not so much the yellow sun as it is um he's he's evolved so far beyond humanity and that's part of the reason why. Right. That was one of the things I, I noticed because it does, it, we get in one panel in the very first panel in action comics, we get the all condensed into one panel as a distant planet was destroyed by old age. A scientist placed his infant <laughs> son within a hastily devised spaceship, launching it toward earth. And right. that's one panel. Right. That's, you know, sparked so many retellings mm-hmm. <laughs> since that they just, it all started in literally one comic panel. But yeah, like the, uh, the scientific, explanation of his strength because they give a quote-unquote scientific explanation mm. uh comparing them to ants and grasshoppers i'm like yeah like right. there's real things that just evolved to be better so everyone on krypton had all the same abilities because they were all just that much further evolutionarily evolved than humans mm-hmm. and it was funny to me that they do spell this all out on page one yeah <laughs> like explicitly tell you all his powers why he has powers, how he got mm. powers, and why they should make sense, all on page one. Yep. And none of it's the yellow sun. Right. It's interesting, like, the breakdown of information and how it's so different 85 years later and how clearly we are so informed by TV and cinema. Right. Mm-hmm. As far as, like, the language that comics kind of follows um, in, in, in a lot of cases, not every case, but a lot of cases. And it, it's so interesting going back and looking at these were like, they weren't as informed by that stuff. And it was just, it was literally, they were more like, what's the most effective way to tell this story through pictures. And you could get like weird non sequiturs and, you know, like, like remarkably narrow panels, right? (laughs) You know, it seems like they think of a lot of this information is like beside the point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So where they're like, how can we just get this out of the way as fast as we can to get to the story we want to tell? Right. <laughs> right. And they don't right. linger on any of it. No. Like there's no like the fact that like some <laughs> some stranger picked him up. Yep. And just, that's ha- that's like a skinny half panel <laughs> on, <laughs> right. on page one. Right. And dropped him off at an orphanage. Yep. And didn't bother to like you know I guess he didn't exhibit any powers in the car right over so <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> But once he got there, you right. know, there's a little baby lifting up a Barca lounger. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. Lazy boy is up in the air now. So yeah. what do we do, Doc? Um, right. Yeah, that, that was interesting. Like, I, you know, I knew that they weren't the Kents weren't mentioned, but at the same yeah. time, I forgot that it was just like, oh, yeah, someone picked him up and dropped him off. And that mm-hmm. was that, you know, and as it gets retconned later. Similar. Like there's been similar stories like that where the, where the Kents want to go through the legal process. <laughs> <laughs> of of adopting him legally. Right. Instead of just keeping him. 
<laughs> from the cornfield. Well, the other, I mean, the other one that I like is one of, I think the one of my favorites, I can't remember who it was, but, um, the idea that there was a, sn- like a, like a storm. Okay. Like there was like a big blizzard and they were snowed in for like right. three months. Right. <laughs> so yeah. by the time they got to, got to see people, it's like, look, we had a kid in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. Martha didn't just even wasn't, know Martha was pregnant. Oh, yeah, yeah. Martha, <laughs> Martha wasn't showing all that much before. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I love that one. I think that one's great. Yeah. So. Yeah. The other thing that stands out is like the, is the explanation of what his powers are that they clearly mm. explicitly tell you. Yeah. <laughs> like like it, it was funny to me how detailed they tell you too. Right. And then how much has changed since then. But mm-hmm. like the, uh, like first power is quote it says uh, leap one eighth of a mile yeah yeah or hurdle a twenty story building and so right. it's basically he could long jump two football fields uh-huh. or jump vertically eighty to a hundred yards up so like vertically <laughs> one football field uh, and then the other one was raise tremendous weights uh-huh. run faster than an express train okay and that nothing less than a bursting shell could penetrate his skin. Uh-huh. Which, like, I, so I figured out, like, they're saying bullets can't hurt him, but, like, artillery, like, World War One and World War Two artillery would at that yes. point. Tanks, tanks would give him a trouble. Yeah. <laughs> That's his yeah. original power set. Yeah, not moving planets in this one. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Not flying backwards through time. Nope. nope. Exactly. Nope, nope, nope. Not nope. saving right. the world by listening really hard. Right, right. right. And, and, frankly, not flying at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No super ventriloquism. None of that right. stuff. Yes. So those things were all interesting observations I had on page one. Right. And the scientific explanation I mentioned before, I just thought it was, it was funny that they're like, no, like really this could happen. Like, yeah. just, <laughs> it's not that crazy. Just right, go, yeah. with it. go with it. <laughs> I mean, it is interesting that you get one panel in the first page of him in costume and it is a striking image. Like right. compared, compared to the rest of it, it's not like the rest of it was drawn poorly. Like the, you know, clearly like the him out racing the train is really cool and leaping and holding up the girder and all that stuff. But yeah, just the one shot of Superman is, <laughs> It works, you know. It's hard to argue as, as you know, as striking an image as it is, you know, when it's just it throws on that one page. So, yeah, the the art's actually like really moody in parts of it. I think, it, it, like, I, I think it's just sort of like kind of like the cross hatching shading uh-huh. on his costume. Yeah, for like the nighttime for the nighttime yeah. shots. Yeah, but I think that stuff looks really really great. Right. <laughs> yeah. Even today, it's really cool. Well, the visual language. I mean, the visual language of it isn't bad. Like the layout's nice, and the like like the like. A, you know, from panel to panel transition of what Superman's doing, it works really well. Yeah. Like, I, fe- I felt it did. Like, I mean, I think I think when you get to the actual meat of the story and what Superman's doing, like... I mean, yeah, I mean, along those same lines, I mean, like, I was struck reading it. I'm, I'm going, like, I, I kind of don't need to read this. Like, this, the, the pictures themselves kind of carry the story really, really right. well. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot... What I, what I liked, what I noticed most about the way um, Schuster... Mm-hmm. Portray Superman is Superman. If you notice in the panels, Superman leads with his chin an awful lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it's not like, it's not bad. Cause again, he's, you know, at that point he's Superman. No one's really, I mean, you know, it's his first appearance, you know, they're still figuring the character out. But as I look at it again, like there's so many shots of him, like leaning, like leaning forward, almost at the, you know, doing the, doing a flex <laughs> in, guy, in yeah. people's face of like, right. I dare you to try and do something. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> I will say this, when, 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 you know, as much as I'm, I'm, I'm pro red trunks, I'm almost cool with no boots. Oh, yeah. Right? I am. I found out, like, like I, I kind of am okay with it. Like, it doesn't look, that doesn't look bad to me. Mm. I think, I think that's kind of okay. Yeah, I it mean, didn't I, stand out to me. I actually didn't notice until you mentioned right. it. I was like, oh, yeah, there are no boots. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like the red boots. The red boots are, are iconic to me as well. But I'm look, like, looking back, I'm like, nah, if, they didn't put, if someone did want to give me a design with no boots, I'm kind of okay with it. Mm. I sort of missed it. I did yeah. notice it. I sort of missed it, but I got used to it. Mm-hmm. I could like I'm 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 with you in that sense. I feel like I think somebody could convince me of it, right? You know, somebody if somebody had a take on that on that look. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm you like know, I would yeah. be I would I would not mind a modern take on that without the boots, keeping the trunks. <laughs> that 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 was my thought. The other thing that kind of struck me about it is um, reading it. <laughs> Uh, I've read a lot of like 30s and 40s comics, and this is like uh-huh. the first time that like the cover is actually like the story. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's just you know, like, like a big version of a panel we see later. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. So does somebody want to sum it up? Like give us a summary of, of what the story is? 
Well, it's it's really three stories. Right. <laughs> There's like really three action beats in this 14 pages. Mm-hmm. So I'll go with the first one. I'll just okay. some of the first action beat, which is uh, we first see Superman leaping through the air, carrying a bound gagged woman that he lands and uh, leaves against a tree and says, make yourself comfortable. I haven't time to attend to it. No, no, con- no controversy there. <laughs> yeah. Perfectly fine. <laughs> it's, that's our introduction <laughs> to the story of this character. And like, uh, OK, I don't know what's mm-hmm. happening there. And then he approaches, uh, goes to the governor. Um to the governor's mansion and breaks in to the governor's mansion when the butler yep. won't let him in. Right. Demands to see the governor and uh, breaks through a steel door that the governor <laughs> sleeps behind for some reason. Right. Not a well liked governor, we have to assume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, the governor's butler is not very nice and no, and does dare Superman to, to knock down the steel door. So he does. <laughs> I thought, real quick, Clifton, I thought yep. it was interesting. Like, it reminded me of. A lot of times you'll see Superman do like it's even in Man of Steel. Like Superman will do stuff like to to teach a bully a lesson, right? Or it's in like it's in Superman Two when he loses power and then gets his powers back and he, you know shoves the bully down the diner. Yeah, yeah. And people are like, oh, I can't believe Superman would never do such a thing. I'm like, it's there from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, Superman it's... is you know not quite the whole Superman is you know is a dick thing, but it's like the idea that <laughs> no Superman's kind of like you know. Uh, he, it was, again, the panel after he breaks down the door is like, it was your idea. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's like, you said to do it. I was, right. I only obliged. Yes. And then we find out he's trying to get to the governor because he uh, has evidence that a woman is going to be wrongfully executed. So mm. there's an innocent woman that he has proof of her innocence that he wants to, the governor to stop the uh, execution of. Right. And that's the point of this story, of this beat. I did like in, in just a little two panels, I thought it was really interesting, the use of the t- the ticking clock. I thought that actually worked really well. Yeah, I made note yeah. of that, too. I thought it was like, it, that seems kind of daring for 1938 comic Absolutely. storytelling. <laughs> right, right. We don't, you know, you don't really see, you see a little of that. I think it's in, it's kind of similar to, um, is it Batman 1, Zach, the one with the, the, the Batman's in the room and the guy's, the, the Joker's going to poison. Yeah, Batman 1. Okay, yeah. So it's similar, mm-hmm. it reminds me somewhat of that, of the idea, but this works better, I think, with the actual clock going like, he's only got so much time before this person's put, you know, put to death. So. Right, that execution's literally going to happen at midnight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so the, the little clock says, a life hangs in the balance, 12 minutes to go, and then we see it go down to nine minutes, and mm-hmm. yeah. I did make note of that because I really thought it was a cool, a cool yeah. little story device. Mm-hmm. I like the panel of him as Clark looking at the newspaper. Oh, oh yeah, the next day, like get like getting this, getting the summary right. of the story, and he's like, "Good, I'm not mentioned." <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Like I yeah. think that that I think there's like a lot of weight to that panel of. I mean, it could it, it can also be like you know protection of the secret identity and and yeah. stuff like that. But but it, there is, I mean, it reads to me a little bit also like you know just wants to do good. And right. doesn't yeah. doesn't doesn't care about being written about no. doesn't care about the spotlight doesn't care about like right. getting credit for anything mm-hmm. he's just no like this is the right thing to do right. somebody wrong right. you know the wrong person was going to be put to death yeah. and i stopped it and yeah. that's the story and we find out that the bound gagged woman he was carrying was the actual murderess and <laughs> yep. he tells the governor that like oh yeah, yeah the real murderer is on your she's, lawn yeah, she's out of woods yeah <laughs> <laughs> So you bit. you can take care of that. But I was I was really surprised that that came back around. Yeah, uh-huh. and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it <laughs> was it wasn't just like he was saving a woman, right? Got, like that was bound, or, and then right. he was like, I got this other thing to worry about. Like I'll come back, right? <laughs> yeah, thirty got thirty Superman collected women. It's just a thing that they grew out of it eventually. Once the radio show, no, right. it was yeah. a, that was the thing. Yeah, he just yeah. He, he, the murder's right here. I got it wrapped up for you. <laughs> So yeah, that was the first story beat because they pack a lot in mm-hmm. 14 pages yeah. back in the day. Yep. The next bit is uh, he goes into the daily, was it daily star? Yes. That's yeah, yeah. on our daily planet. You know, there's a little bit of talk of, you know, he's not human. You know, thank goodness he's on our side, which is a right. nice bit, I thought. Yeah. Um, he gets asked by his editor, who is not Perry White. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you know, you ever heard of Superman? And Clark's kind of like, whoa, hey. Um, I'll get the story chief, that whole thing. But in the midst of it, like from the city desk, I guess there's a, <laughs> a tip about a wife beater, which I thought was like, <laughs> yes, I guess that happens. Right. So, um, 
you know, Clark, Clark's like, I'm on my way, you know, and shows up as Superman, and, and the guy's standing over his wife, and clearly he's been, you know, knocking her around. And it's again the, the 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 language of it all. Like he picks the dude up in the air. The dude's still trying to threaten him. Yeah. And Superman throws him in a wall and says, <laughs> "You're not fighting a woman now." Right. And it's great. Yeah. <laughs> like it's awesome. You know. Yeah. And the guy tries to stab him. Doesn't work. So <laughs> it's a hard <laughs> you know? throw. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah <laughs> it was a like, hard throw. Yeah, there's like, like pieces of wall coming off. Yeah. Of right. It. Right. That's plaster coming off that wall. <laughs> you know. But that's awesome. Um, then you see like the 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 bit he basically switches to Clark, and, and there's where the cops get there. Right, right. When he hears the authorities approaching, puts on the suit, and it's like, I just right. found this guy like this. Apparently, Superman was here. I guess I don't know. <laughs> um, and then he, you know, he asks out Lois, which is nice. Um, mm-hmm. What I love is with <laughs> this, the second bit of dialogue with Lois is the whole thing about I've been writing sob stories all day. Don't make me write, don't make me hear another one. Right. <laughs> It's such a great, like, Lois not knowing who he is and just being like, oh, this guy, right. you know, is great. And again, it, it's there from the beginning. And it's not like she's like a terrible person. It's just she's right. like, oh, this guy. Well, like, that's, like he asks, he, he comes up and asks her a little stammeringly, like, well, what do you say to a date tonight? And her response uh, is, I suppose I'll give you a break for a change. Yeah. <laughs> but. You know, and then you got you got mobster types, you got gangster types who you know who who notice Lois. It's being a nice looking dame. You know, and they go to cut in. Um, you know, and it's that whole thing of Clark's got to play. You know, has to play the the milk sop. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and sort of not let the and then the, again, it's a great thing of Lois being like, nope. You know, she's not gonna let anybody talk to her like that. Slaps the dude, and oh, then tries Lois. to take. Yeah, oh, he tries Lois to you know Lois Lois stamps out and says, "This is why I don't want to date you because you're a coward." And like <laughs> leaves him leaves him there. Tries to take off. Mops is like, "No one's going to show me up like that." They grab Lois. They take her in the car, and then again, this comes to the point of like so like Superman being like a prankster of like they're going to run him over in his Superman suit. He jumps over them and then starts chasing them. And they're like, "It's the devil himself!" <laughs> right? <laughs> Which just is, like how freaked out they are. Right? It's again, it's awesome because they're like, "Oh my god, what's what is what has just happened?" <laughs> and then you get the scene from the cover where Superman picks up the car and like sort of shakes them out. And I wondered at first, I'm like, "Did he?" Because Lois is not, you know, you don't see Lois after the point, but it, it looked like he's holding the car, shakes them out, catches her. You know, in one hand, and then holds the car. Oh, yeah, there's he's catching somebody coming out of the car, right? In one of the panels, yeah. And then just smashes their car, <laughs> and then goes, you know, grabs Butch, and then takes him up, takes him up and hangs him on a flagpole, <laughs> you know. And he's, you know, and just sort of does. And again, it did what it reminded me a lot of was um, of Spider Man stuff, mm-hmm. where Spider Man webs up Jonah, or Spider Man leaves a crook hanging from something with a note, right. you know, your friendly neighborhood Spider Man. Right. And and then we get the panel that that's been done a couple different places. I think Alice Ross did it. Um, you needn't be afraid of me. I won't harm you. Or right. even again, he's leading with his chin and he's leading forward into her face mm-hmm. and lets her know, listen, I'm not I'm not a threat. Right. <laughs> you know. Oh, and then I, <laughs> I do like the I, I, you really shouldn't print this. <laughs> 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 Which again, I mean, I I kind of took it as the whole thing of uh, you know later on Lois is in and out of trouble for most of her you know the fifties, sixties, and seventies because she's Superman's girlfriend. You know, if Superman comes to the rescue every time Lois is in trouble, you might want to let not let people know that's going to happen. I guess. Right. Yeah. So, and then she tries to convince the editor that yep, nope, she saw Superman. Right. And then, of course, she gives Clark the cold shoulder because that's what happens for the next, like, 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> for, for a little bit. For a yeah, little while. Yeah, for quite some time. Before she gives him another chance for a change. Right, right. Yeah, this one, like, I did think it was interesting that he gets, like, I thought it's a fun bit that they assign Clark Kent to the Superman beat. Right. Because <laughs> apparently that's what they're, they got a Superman beat now that they got rumors. Right. And then uh, the fact that, like, right now, so he's he's protecting somebody from being executed even though they were innocent and now he's beating up a white like he beats the crap out of a spousal abuser <laughs> yeah <laughs> like these are the first two things we ever see superman do i thought was was fun yeah no issue there <laughs> yep now in the third story is also something that could be kind of taken out of uh today's <laughs> like it feels right at home yeah oh, today's, yeah. Yep. today's political climate too it's funny it's funny you say that i was laughing as i was looking read it over my wife's like what and i said <laughs> 
I said, this is from 38, and they're concerned about a senator being bought by a lobbyist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, 85 yeah. years ago. So, right. yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's the main thrust of the third of the third story mm-hmm. of action number 1 with Superman where, you know, he gets an assignment to go to like cover some South American war as a war correspondent. He 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 doesn't do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and goes to and He's goes to hunch. Washington. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he hops a train to Washington. And gets wind of, of yeah, a corrupt senator and, and a lobbyist that's, you know, like, you know, bought him off and, and you know, and Superman basically just terrorizes the lobbyist <laughs> until mm-hmm. he confesses, you know, right. on Capitol Hill. Yep. yep. I'm, I'm going through it quickly so we can, we can also touch upon some other things before, before wrapping up. But, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I was surprised. I mean, the one thing about Action 1 that I, that I never remember is that Lois, it's Lois's first appearance, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, man, her character is right there from the get go too. Oh yeah, like <laughs> you know. But yeah, I mean, what else? I mean, do you think that this this? I mean, truly, do you think this does a lot of like heavy lifting of the lore of of, of that's still around? Hmm. I mean, yes, and that like, there's a lot here. That, mm-hmm. I mean, we talk about how much got changed after this. Powers have been changed. Tons mm-hmm. of new characters, but. Like I still feel like the heart of Superman is in this is in this fourteen pages pretty yeah. well. <laughs> I mean, very much similar to how like the heart of Spider Man is in Amazing Fifteen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's I think a lot of it is like again, it's interesting to see because there was a, a I, I want to say it's a Dan Jurgen story in the in the Superman later stuff in the nineties about Clark living next door to a guy who was beating his wife, and it's a completely different story because he does he can hear it all because of super hearing, but doesn't intervene. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those things where, you know, <laughs> 38 had no problem intervening, <laughs> <Nope. Yeah. laughs> you know, and no worries about it. So, I mean, I, I think he's a little more, you know, I, I don't think in this one, he's quite the big blue boy scout. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I think he's a lot more, I think there's a lot more emphasis in, and I'm not being punny or funny. I think it's a lot more emphasis on the action. Yeah. And the idea of what he can do versus, you know, and again, there is no. Again, it's 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 interesting to think about it in in the vacuum of 1938, and there is there are no other superheroes, right? Right. Like he's it, you know. So it's kind of as as Clifton said, you know, the fact that they would be terrified of him <laughs> <laughs> makes sense, right? You know, because there is nothing. There's no. There's no comparison. There's no, no scale to what, you know, this guy can do compared to anybody else. I remember thinking that too, reading. I'm like, man, there's such a departure of like what he would be able to do to people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and yeah, like in how he could legit scare the crap out of you. Yeah. <laughs> because like, what are you going to do? <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Like, mm-hmm. the other thing that kind of surprised me about this was, um, I don't want to say outright putting in him, but yeah, kind of like clumsy Clark. Yeah. yeah. Which brings me to my second little mm. question here. Yeah. Do we like Clumsy Clark? <laughs> what do you guys think? I I do, but I also like other versions too. So okay. like I'll take it when it's good. Like mm-hmm. I mean, I like I said, I grew up on the, the Christopher Reeve film, which is that. Mm-hmm. Like this panel describes has a caption that says in action one of reluctantly Clark adheres to his role of a weakling. Right. And that's very much like the, the Donner 78 film reading of it where it's like, he's, he can do all this stuff. We know he can do all this amazing stuff, but he doesn't, he doesn't want anyone to else know he can do all amazing stuff. So he overcompensates to be like, I'm a bumbling fool. Mm hmm. And so, like, I, I do like that. I do find charm in that, especially, like, uh, I mean, All-Star Superman Grant Morrison's does take that angle, too, mm-hmm. after it had not been seen uh, for a long time. And yeah. it was it was kind of charming to see there again after not after everyone avoided that take for so long. Right. But, yeah, I kind of like both. Okay. I kind of like both. Frank? I, I'm torn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I do love... You know, I do love Bumbling Clark. I like it more when it's done with the the classic wink yeah. of like, mm-hmm. we all know that he's not, and he right. knows he's not. <laughs> right. And therefore, you know, like, again, growing up, you know, growing up with a lot of those action comics or those Superman comics from the, like, the 70s and, and, and early 80s, you know, there's lots of stuff where, like, Steve Lombard is is the blowhard kind of jock kind of Flash Thompson-y character. Yeah. 
that gets a lot of, you know, and again, he's in Morrison's, um, all-star. Thank you. Yep. In all-star where he gets a little bit of the, you know, the brunt of, of Clark's, you know, Clark's like, yeah, I'll take your nonsense in, uh, on face value, but I'm going to blow your toupee off your head, you know, or, <laughs> you know, or you're going to split your pants. Cause I, you know, I used the, uh, you know, it's super speed or I, you know, tied your shoes together or something along those lines happens to him because of the way he is. Um, I like that. I also like the fact that I never, I've never bought the, the kill bill example of like, he's disdain for humanity. I've right, never right. bought that. I thought that's a yeah. terrible take. Right. Um, I, I think it's more along the lines of, you know, I think that in, 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 in some world, you know, in some ways I think Clark, you know, likes the idea of being able to be just like everybody else. Yeah. You know, yeah, and and the idea that you know, I think he does need, you know, I, I think just from a sensory overload statement, you know, a state, um, I think he needs the ability to sort of shut all that stuff out and just be a person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you know, I mean, there've been stories where he tries to be Superman, you know, twenty four hours a day, you know, and he just, it's just too much for yeah. anybody, even him. So yeah. I, I think we, um, we might do all of this in a future episode. Like this, okay. <laughs> this stuff that you're talking about specifically. Right. Okay. So I don't want to cut you off, but because no, no, no. it's interesting. But right. <laughs> right. No, but I, but I do like, I do like, you know, again, I going back to Burns take, I like Burns, you know, where he's a little more, you know, he's a little more confident, you know, it's, it, he's kind of, you know, um, it's definitely where we get the whole, the whole Smallville, you know, he's from a small town. He's kind of, mm-hmm. he's kind of earnest and hokey, you know, he, he, he's got some kind of background where he was, you know, he, he was, he played sports, but he couldn't play him for too long because he would, you know, hurt people with Superman. But he also, there's a great bit in, in one, I think it's in Man of Steel where Lois first comes over to his apartment. They're going to something together um, as like, you know, colleagues or whatever. And she notices that he lifts weights. Mm-hmm. It might be in his Superman run, but she's like, these are awful small for like, as basically the physique that you have. And yeah. he's like, he has, the, he has that moment of like, oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think I should probably. I should probably have, you know, heavier weights for someone, you know, the first time right. my build, Ooh, I'll get on that. Those 10 pound dumbbell. that's aren't going to get you that physique. Yeah. Lois, <laughs> Lois is like in an evening gown and she sits down at the bench and she's, she's flexing, like, like doing the curls. And she's like, these aren't very heavy at all. I don't know how you're able to get like the size that you are, <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm quite clifted. I like both. I mean, I'll take either one, but I don't, I mean, I don't want, I don't, I, I like I said, I prefer the, the bumbling part with him more of a, a wink and a nod right. to, you know. He knows. Yeah. yeah. And, and going back to the, to the action one, like that bit where the mobster's trying to cut in on his date mm-hmm. and he backs down and then Lois smacks the mobster. Right. And there's just a panel where you see a thought balloon and then a word balloon. And the mm-hmm. thought balloon is, is Clark saying good for you, Lois with an mm-hmm. exclamation point. And then the word balloon is Lois. Don't. <laughs> Cause, <laughs> right. Cause it's an act. Like he's, yeah. he's really, he's appreciates yeah. how action act she is, yeah. and, but he has to play this other part. And yep. uh, I like that reluctance there. That's good. I, um, a little torn, not as much. I generally don't like clumsy Clark. Okay. But I, I can be sold on it with a take okay. with, you know, if somebody has a good take on it, I was, uh, from the day we're recording this, um, I was watching Richard Donner Superman cause it was on TCM like last night, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I was, I was watching and like, God, it's hard not to see how, how like Christopher Reeve just does it so perfectly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? And there's like, there's that awesome bit where he's in Lois's apartment after yeah. Superman has flown away. And Lois is like, she's going out with Clark and she turns around. She's like, Oh, like, let me get my coat or let me get a sweater or something like that. And she's in the other room and he takes his glasses off and he just like stands up straight. And I swear it looks like he, he gets like, like five inches taller. Yeah. (laughs) Just standing up straight (laughs) and the voice changes and the posture changes. And it's like, man, like he's able to do it so well. And so there it's awesome. And Clifton, I'm with you. Like when it came back for all star, I was into it then too. Cause mm. it hadn't been done in 30 years. Right. And, and also it was the fact that I think that it was a self-contained continuity that, that I was like, okay, like I'm fine with this being the take. Cause it's not the take moving right, forward. Right. 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 But I think the trouble is, is that if you don't do clumsy Clark, like a lot of people don't, they take out clumsy Clark and then they don't replace it with anything. Yeah. <laughs> and so he just kind of is bland. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of times. So, um, so it's a trap if you don't have a yeah. plan of what to do <laughs> right. instead. Right. 
So, all right. I want to see where you guys want to go to because I really want to get into bad guys because, <laughs> um, because I do think Superman has a really, really like underloved <laughs> rogues gallery. Mm-hmm. However, though, coming off of action one, I just thought, do you do, do we want to do a few minutes on sort of like where the evolution of some of his powers and stuff came around? Because some of it comes in interest from interesting places. Like, it's not necessarily the comics that introduce yeah. some of these things. Right, right. Yeah. So what do you guys think? Yeah, we can, we can do that. Sure. Yeah, I like okay. that. I think it is interesting to address, especially after we already pointed out what his powers and limitations of powers were explicitly in action comics. And then you're like, but like he does so much more now. Right. And I'll tell you, I'll go with flight. Cause flight did come from the comics, just not his comics. Mm. There were other characters flying before Superman was flying. There were other characters that were more popular and selling better than Superman that were <laughs> flying right before Superman was flying. And then I think they were inspired to add uh, some more powers oh, okay. to his set. And that was uh, Captain Marvel Shazam. Mm-hmm. That was one such case where... Interesting. Uh, it was a hugely popular other character in comics at the time, outselling Superman for a lot of the time in the, in the 40s especially, that they could do these other things that then they said, okay, yeah, like Superman can do that too. And there's a whole other story <laughs> tons of information we can go into about that fight between Superman and and uh and Captain Marvel Shazam, but for another time. I heard that's just a quick bit. I heard a conflicting story about where his flight came from though, too. Okay. I had heard that it was the Fleischers. Okay. That did it. Oh, that added it there. Yeah, that added it. So so the Fleischers who did the first Superman cartoons in, in yeah. 1940. Right. Uh, which are remarkable pieces of animation to watch yeah. that um are actually getting like a remaster blu-ray coming out finally yeah like uh like in may uh 2023 but so what i had heard is that so like the first couple of fleischers is that he is he doesn't have flight he's bounding around okay yeah. and, and i had heard that dave fleischer the director of those is like this is kind of stupid it looks dumb like can we just make him fly it's mm. easier and apparently like and and the story I had heard, which I think like Dan Reba says on one of the Superman animated series special features, is like DC was basically like, yeah, fine, <laughs> like make them fly. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right, right. You know, yeah, it's interesting though because I I feel like those things are concurrent and maybe both did a play be, or both you know, played a factor. I think so it, too because Shazam's first appearance, Captain Marvel, that Captain Marvel, Shazam, Captain Marvel's first appearance was 1940. And he was flying by like his third issue yeah, mm. and, and still in 40. And so, yeah, it sounds like these two things happened right around the same time. And, yeah, okay. and just, just really, really quickly, just glossing over a, a little bit of what you were saying. I mean, and also DC has had a history of not really acknowledging much of the Shazam <laughs> like feud in history and things that right. happen yeah. with it too. So yeah. yeah. That could be another, that could be a topic later down yeah. the line. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's get into some of the bad guys because, uh, now this is just me. I don't know if you guys feel the same way. Like I love Superman's rogues gallery. Sure. I think it's really good. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think really that people, people are like really unfair when they, when it, cause they're like, it's Lex and dark side and that's it. I'm like, ah, no, <laughs> no, not really. I will, right. I will grant you that like that, that a lot of it on mine is like, is on potential. And not necessarily like what we see all the time. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, but I think there's some really, really good ones. Yeah. You know, I love Lex. <laughs> mm-hmm. Clearly, you know, uh, sure. he, he, spoiler, he won our March Madness best bad guy <laughs> tournament for a reason. <laughs> right. Lex is terrific, but I'm a big fan of Parasite. Yeah. I love Parasite. And for the life of me, I don't understand how Parasite's not a Justice League bad guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can see right? that. Right? I mean, you got right. a guy who, like, he gets close to you, he gra- like, all he needs to do is grab a hold of you, and mm-hmm. he absorbs, you know, your memory, he can do your voice, all that stuff, and if he grabs hold of you and you happen to be super-powered, he can do right. your superpowers. Right. Right? right? So, yeah. it seems to me, like, I think about, like, all the times I've seen the Justice League, like, fight Amazo, and they have trouble with it, because, like, he can do everything that they can do. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm like, this is so easily Parasite. Right? Right? Sure. It's so easily Parasite, but it's, 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 
but it's also not a robot like with Amazo where you can't just trash the thing. Like, right, you know right, what I mean? Right. Like if you have, we're like the guys in DC who take some care of him to like, we can't, we're not going to kill the guy. Mm-hmm. So we need to, we need to take down the guy that has Superman's powers and Wonder Woman's powers and the Flash's powers, but not hurt him. Right, mm-hmm. right. What's that going to be like, right? Like there's potential there. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> yeah, Parasite's always a good one. Um, Off the top of my head, I like Mongol a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think. For a long time, Mongol was sort of like relegated to a Superman story yeah. <laughs> or a couple Superman stories. Um, right. Some good ones. Some great ones. <laughs> War World stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that was like the basic, you know, in the last, uh, in the last, you know, last few years, there's been a bigger push to make him a bigger deal in the Superman stuff, which I think is great with the, with all the stuff with War World and him being, you know, sort of like not quite dark side level, but at the same time, obviously a threat. So right. I like I like Mongol a whole lot. Yeah, he's one of those that can go toe to toe with Superman too, mm-hmm. and it's like, but there's no. I'm trying to th- I'm trying to figure out a way to say it. Like, like he just is that way. There's not some yeah. sort of like weird explanation <laughs> as to like how he can go toe to toe. Like he's just as he's just as strong as he is. Right. Right. You know. Yeah. He is just an evolutionarily advanced alien. Yeah. <laughs> that mm-hmm. has that power as a result. Right. Yep. I'm going to throw in is one I have always liked is Mixie. Sure. Mr. Yeah. Mixius Pedelic, even mm-hmm. from like uh, appearances on Super Friends, right? Where he was called Mitzelplik at the time. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then uh, the animated series one was the one that gave us the Mixius Pedelic uh, yeah, right. spelled out. Uh, I like both. I can use both. Uh, but yeah, I'll probably still go with the Mixius Pedelic more often. But yeah, it's just. Cause you've got a character of, in Superman who seems like a God on earth and, right. and now you give him a trickster God <laughs> to, mm-hmm. to have to deal with as a foil. And I think those appearances have always been fun. Uh, yeah. even super friends, even the animated series with Gilbert Gottfried were great. Yeah. Yep. Some really good. Yeah, ones. I just think there's so much fun of it. Just being like the, and it also, you get, you get to see Superman not be serious sometimes in it. Right. Uh, which I thought was always fun because because that's like he's dealing with the trickster and sometimes you got to trick back yeah to right. to beat the trickster and it's fun to see Superman have to fight that way yeah, yeah. cleverly I was gonna say yeah mm-hmm. he has, he's got to fight him with his brain but not yeah. in a way mm-hmm. that's like he's not fighting like Brainiac or Lex with <laughs> right, his brain right. right you know yeah it's like in a yep. fun way mm-hmm. I've always thought that the Superman the animated series guys put the name uh in like a script software that could read it out loud <laughs> right and that's what it said and that's why they went with all right i guess it's mix X, <laughs> mix yes spitalic could have been because <laughs> right, they could yeah. have been using final draft to yeah. do the scripts and they did like the voice effect the voice feature on it and that's how it came out yeah i've not read that anywhere i'm just i'm just guessing <laughs> myself um i mean it's not a bad guess <laughs> but i was i mean i always like the whole thing of him also the fact that it showed that superman was vulnerable to magic because I just think right. it's it's a thing that they just don't use enough in the comics. It's always, oh, someone's got kryptonite or kryptonite bullets oh. or, you know, kryptonite dagger or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, but, you know, <laughs> magic messes him up just as well as kryptonite yeah, does. Right. I agree. It's and, not used enough. And, and Mixie was one of those that, you know, they're always, always threw a, you know, a wrench into things for him. And again, there's the fact that he would have to outthink him or, or, out, or out, uh, out trick him. It was always fun. Yeah. I've always thought, like, along those lines, like you said, where, like, magic's not used a lot. Like, mm-hmm. Frank, we've talked, uh, you know, offline about, about like, writing and stuff like that. And I've always thought, like, like how is Lex not getting into magic at any point? <laughs> right. Like, once, <laughs> yeah. it becomes, once it becomes known information and, like, it's a vulnerability to him, I feel like it's just another thing. You'd be like, oh, I can get him that way, too. Sure. Of course. And I think about, like, that scene in, like, in All-Star Superman. Mm-hmm. Um which we'll get into in a little more detail, <laughs> um, yeah. I'm sure. But there's a cool point in, like, I think it's like issue five where Clark Kent is interviewing Lex in jail for the newspaper. Uh, and Lex glances over at Clark's notebook where he's taking notes. And he's like, what is, like, what's with your handwriting? Like, what is this? Like, you got the worst handwriting mm-hmm. I've ever seen. And he goes like, oh, it's shorthand. Right. He's like, what? <laughs> he's like, yeah. He's like, no, I took it in college. It's shorthand. It's how it, like, it's how I jot notes down faster. And he goes, huh. And he goes, Another thing I have to learn. Yeah. And like, and I love that bit where like, as soon as there's something he doesn't know, it's like, right. I got to learn it and I got to master oh, yeah. it. And mm-hmm. I feel like, so just take that bit to magic with Lex. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I mean, it makes, I mean, it makes, it makes sense. It's right there. Yeah. But, 
so far, not so much. So I've always uh I love the visual of Metallo. Mm-hmm. I uh I I will freely admit that Metallo is kinda he's a punchy bad guy. Right. You know? But I, I just love the visual of of uh one, he's the the man with the kryptonite heart. Right. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a neat <laughs> That's how I met him. It's a neat slogan, it's a neat catchphrase. He was in um when I when he's in one of those digests. That's how I read like a Superman Rogues or a Superman Kryptonite story. That was the tag was just he's the man with the Kryptonite heart. So that's what he's always been for me. Yeah. Yeah. But I also like the idea of like he he's he's like a literal man of steel that has to fight the man of steel. Right. <laughs> I just like that kind yeah. of take on things. Um you know, and so he he's he's just one for some reason. Like I always get kind of jazzed when he pops up in things. Like I'm really mm-hmm. excited when I see Metallo. You know, I think too the fact that like I, I think in kind of a in like a body horror kind of way, like you go you can always have fun with how the visual comes to be. Right. Or like I feel like I would always have him show up as looking like a normal guy. Right. <laughs> and then by the end of it, like he's shredded off, and you have you have bits of the exoskeleton showing. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, like the Terminator effect. Yeah, and you could do it in different ways. Like I feel like I would have a lot of fun with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he's another one I think that's super, super, super underrated. Um, you know, and I remember in, I want to say like 2006 when Jeff Johns was on the book, he kind of like tried to um, scale him up a little bit. So instead of being the man with just the green kryptonite in the heart, he gave him the other colored kryptonites in different extremities. Okay. Right? So like he had like red kryptonite in like one wrist and he had like gold kryptonite in another wrist. Then, you know, and stuff like that. And I thought that that was kind of neat that he had um, like like a, an arsenal mm-hmm. on his side. Right. Which that brings me to another question. Okay. What's your favorite color kryptonite? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I forget what some of them do. Okay. I'll help you out. So classic green kryptonite uh, inflicts pain. Uh, I read in some cases, some say that like it would induce like flu like symptoms and weakens him. Right. Okay. Um, Mm. there's red kryptonite, which changes Superman radically, but temporarily. Uh So like, it'll mix up a power or it'll take a power away or it'll turn him into like a dinosaur or, (laughs) (laughs) you know, something like that. Yep. Gold kryptonite was supposed to be the most dangerous. And that was, that was the one that removed Kryptonian's powers permanently. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then. Later, it became that, like, it removed it temporarily. Okay. And I think it was in that John's pieces where I saw it, where, like, as I fought Kryptonians and he would use, Metallo would use the gold kryptonite just long enough where he would, like, use it and focus it when a Kryptonian was in the air, because it only lasted, like, it only lasted 30 seconds where they wouldn't have powers, but 30 seconds was enough for them to fall. Okay. (laughs) And not have powers, right? (laughs) And he would kill them that way. Blue kryptonite affects bizarros only. (laughs) Right. That's true. White kryptonite kills plant life. That's true. Of any origin. Uh, Platinum, which I never even heard about, so I guess it's uh, relatively new, gives Mm -hmm. humans Superman powers. Okay. Okay. And then there's black kryptonite, which uh, creates like a separate body with a separate personality. Right. Like an evil, an evil version. I think Supergirl had had one of the, I think there's a Smallville episode about this too, right? Yeah, you can picture it being used a couple times in the in, in last several decades, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think mine, for like when I was a kid uh, and I would see the shows and, and stuff, it was always the red kryptonite because I was like, what's going to happen? Right. Yeah. I like the unpredictability of the red kryptonite. That was my mm-hmm. favorite. It was just seeing like what crazy thing's going to happen this time. Frank, what about you? Um, I liked, I was, I would go with gold. Okay. It was always one of those things where even as a kid, like when you make your own Superman stories up or you're playing like with figures or whatever, um, I was always concerned like, oh man, gold kryptonite, that's it. That's game over. <laughs> um, you know, if you introduce that and then it was, then it was always a, a, some kind of MacGuffin to try and figure out how Superman would get his powers back and be able to save the day. Yeah. Right. Also is one of those things where like the first time I ever read about the Martian Manhunter, it's one of those, uh, treasury editions of like the super friends and it's got reprints of like the oh no it's the i'm sorry it's the it's the reprint of the the superman flash stories in treasury size and the martian man these two aliens basically long story short make superman and flash run a, run a race across the galaxy it's a second race that they run and the martian man 
tries to make it look makes himself you know mimic Superman, and these aliens have gold kryptonite on them, and they use it on him, and somehow he then loses the ability to turn himself into Superman after that. Okay, <laughs> like I don't know, and there's no reason why it would work that way, but it does. And again, I thought that was really interesting. That like, oh wow! And again, I didn't know what the Martian Manhunter's story or his superpowers or what he could really do, but it was kind of like, well. He can no longer be Superman, I guess. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you guys pick the two that are my favorite. Ah, okay. okay. <laughs> right. I like I like gold, mm-hmm. uh, because of the threat level. Right. Right. That that it brings. Um, mm-hmm. man, there's a there's there's a story about like the hunt for gold kryptonite. That's got to be like somebody's got to do that, right? It's, it's got to be rare, right? It can't just be everywhere. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. It's right? not. It's <laughs> not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot, but there's also like more modern stories. A lot of times you have, um, it's in like, uh, what's the one, uh, Tower of Babel, mm. right? There's the idea that, that Bruce, ba- the Batman spends a lot of money. Like one of the, the whole story of the Biden ba- uh, Tower of Babel is like, there's all these contingency plans in case any of the members of Justice League go rogue. And the one he has for Superman has to do with, if I remember correctly, Batman has bombarded <laughs> green kryptonite with radiation and gotten red kryptonite or a form of red kryptonite out of it. And there's a couple stories kind of like along those lines of that you could basically, uh, by applying a certain amount of radiation to it, you can have, you can eventually get it to go into the next uh, shade, I guess, of kryptonite. Right. But I do also, don't get me wrong, as much as I kind of like, eh, green kryptonite, I do like when it's kind of like the idea of green bullets, like yeah. the kryptonite bullets. I think that's cool. Like the, the uh, was it absolute, I think it's absolute power, the Jeff Loeb and Carlos, uh, late Carlos Pacheco's story for, um, Batman Superman is really good. You've got Jonah Hex firing a gun with kryptonite bullets. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good bit. Hard to beat that yeah. bit. You know, and then there's been various, like, bounty hunters or, you know, alien bounty hunters or people going after Superman with... That's like... And again, that's just the beginning of Loeb's story, right? Isn't it that, that he gets shot yeah. with a kryptonite bullet? Yeah. That's Metallo again, too. Yeah. Metallo he takes again, a shard right. of it from his heart and he... That's, right. when, that's when he's able to sort of, like, create weapons also, like the Terminator. Like, like uh... Yes. Like, well, T3 Terminator. <laughs> Yeah. Right. But yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of all that stuff. Like, I think yeah. that's when people do that stuff, when people are invented with green kryptonite, right? As opposed to just like, I've got a hunk of rock. Yeah. You know, I like yeah, got Charlie I Brown, I got a rock, and it's just, you know, <laughs> that's what they got. So, but I like red too. I like the unpredictability that red brings to it and just sort of like, it, you know, it's just something that screams the Silver Age. Yeah. Sure. Too, really. yeah, yeah. One of my favorite, um, one of my favorite Legion stories, um, the, the thing that, that causes a change. In a character, and I won't say exactly which one, is Red Kryptonite. It's one of my favorite Legion stories from the Silver Age that has to do with Red Kryptonite, of all things, in the future. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, red and gold, I agree. I think, but more than likely, I said just gold, because of the fact that it just it's it's supposed to be permanent. <laughs> there's supposed to be no, <laughs> you know, there's supposed to be no way to come back from it. But you know, comics, so. right? And then uh, Clifton, I know this one's one of your favorites. It's kind of a cheat, okay. but it's Superman Revenge Squad. Oh yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. the words Superman Revenge Squad do not get said <laughs> enough on this show. No. Nope. Right. I just love the idea of it. Yeah. It's, it's terrific. A, all these people got beat and they're like, wait, yeah. like we all get beat alone, but maybe, just mm-hmm. maybe, if we team up. My favorite version is the one that's in um in was it uh it's in Ju- is it Justice League? The what hereafter episodes? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're in the beginning. Yeah, I love that bit at the beginning. I'm like, oh, Superman Revenge Squad. <laughs> Who is in that? I'm blanking. I know it's Toy Man. Mm-hmm. Who else? It is Calabac. Okay. Livewire. Oh, yeah. Metallo and Weather Wizard. I was going to say, I had Weather Wizard in my head for some reason. I was like, no, I don't remember. <laughs> it's a good crew. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very good crew. Very strong. Like, I mean, they, you know, I, I would think they would have no trouble. But again, it, it becomes a Just League story because of the, where it uh, comes about. I, what I like about Toy Man, too, is that, like, the unconventional unconventionality of sort of, like, the things he can attack him with. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, you don't necessarily need something with, like, brute force. Like, no. I remember, like, what, like, like he threw, like, Play-Doh at him. Like, some kind of, like, <laughs> like right. uh, uh, modified Play-Doh where, like, he just, like, he couldn't get it, get it off of him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And, like, and right. it was trapping him that way, where, like, he just every movement this thing just kept like like stretching and getting bigger and i'm like yeah i like that like i like inventive ways on how to stop him mm-hmm. you know sure yeah superman revenge squad is fantastic yep for sure all right so real quick what's one that you want to see in the movies 
just quick, quick bad guy you want to see done in, in, in one of the James. Well, I get, yeah, I guess it's James Gunn's movie now. Mm-hmm. What's a bad guy you want to see in there? Manchester Black. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I want, I want, uh, uh, Superman versus the, was the elite? Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's what I want. Love it. That's, that's, that's my choice. Clifton, what about you? I will say, uh, ultra human night. Ooh, okay. That's a great Just choice. because it is the first Superman super villain. Yeah. It is the first yeah. super villain, super villain Superman ever had to face. And we've never seen, uh, ultra human night in a film and, and only a little bit in animated stuff. Okay. I'm going to cheat and do and go to one that we see all the time, but I want to see Lex. The caveat is I want to see Lex in the power suit. Okay. You know, like I want to see Lex actually fight Superman. Right. Yeah. No, that'd be cool. Right. Yeah. All good choices. All right. So we are going to wrap up with, um, it occurred to me that like, we didn't talk a whole lot about like classic stories, like over the years of doing the show, like Mm -hmm. classic Superman stories. So I thought, uh, we would close out on some classic Superman stories if people want to actually seek them out then, uh, you know, that haven't before. So we'll end on that. But first, if you like the show, you can check out all of our episodes on let me know how it is dot com. Just please, however you find us, don't forget to like, subscribe and leave us a review. And finally, if you want to suggest a topic, let us know in the comments, Twitter or email us at info at let me know how it is dot com. All right. What are some classic Superman stories? Uh, for me, my, um, one of my all time favorites is from 1963 (laughs) in the midst of the silver age. It's the, uh, Superman issue number 164. It's, uh, featuring the showdown between Lex Luthor and Superman. Um, Superman is pursuing Lex across the galaxy. It's one of those stories where Lex is, um, I believe he's hailed as a hero on a planet that they eventually call Lexor. It's kind of the planet that Lex, for a while, in continuity goes away to, and he's trying to turn over a new leaf, but Superman's like, no, you, you did a bunch of stuff on Earth, you gotta come back with me. Anyway, they end up fighting on a Red Sun planet, and actually, like, bare-knuckle box. <laughs> nice. It's a great cover, because, like, Superman gets a black eye from Lex, and he's, like, punching him in the stomach, and it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrific. It's Kurt Swan at his finest. It's, it's a great throwdown between the two of them, where you don't, like you said, they fight, but it's it's much more of an even, they're on much more of an even keel because you know Superman doesn't have any powers at that point because of you know this red sun so right it's terrific okay highly recommend it what you got Clifton I'm sticking with a big classic um, and one that that Frank alluded to earlier with Manchester Black and that is uh, Action Seven Seventy Five right yep. yeah I had that in my when we way back when we did uh, favorite single issues as one okay. of my favorites. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah, the Action Comics number seven hundred and seventy five, which is what's so funny about Truth, Justice, and the American Way. Oh, so good. Came out in uh, two thousand one by uh, Joe Kelly and Doug Mankey, I think. Mm. I believe you're right. Yeah, as as writer and artist. Manchester Black and his team of anti-Superman superhumans believe that Superman's moral code is outdated and that he needs to take more extreme measures to protect the world is generally what's it, what it's about. And it's, it's really good. It's questioning, like, is Superman too hokey for the modern world? Right. And this was in 2001. It's a question that still comes up, mm-hmm. uh, I think, among people a lot. And uh, I always say no. <laughs> <laughs> Emphatically no. When done right, you know, of course. Um, right. But yeah, like good old Superman isn't too hokey for the modern world. And this one is, is a fun story that explores that. Nice. No, I like that one. That's a good one because I think that's what I had in mind sort of for this segment is sort of like, what are the easy go-tos that maybe people haven't mm-hmm. gotten to? And that's a great one. I mean, that is top five, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. For Superman stories. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, for the man who has everything. Oh. Okay. Alan Moore classic. That's like- Dave Gibbons. Correct. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And um, it's it, it it sounds like kind of a, a sillier setup than it is, but it's um, Batman and Wonder Woman and Jason Todd at the time because it came out in the eighties. <laughs> Robin, yeah. Uh, going to the Fortress of Solitude for Superman's birthday, and when they get there, they find Superman standing there stoically with like this this you know horrific uh plant that's wrapped around him called the black mercy and the black mercy is able to is, has like a psychic link with, uh, with, uh, his prey and mm-hmm. it's able to manifest the praise like, uh, uh, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Like heart's desire. Yeah. Heart's desire. Right. And so you yeah. see Superman on Krypton as if Krypton never exploded. And he has an entire life <laughs> on Krypton. Right. And it is a fantastic story uh, with a heartbreaking ending. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, but yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I think I think anybody trying to get into the Man of Steel like that's required reading. I think mm-hmm. really all of the Alan Moore Supermans <laughs> are right. too. I, th- I think great. that's the most accessible of all of them. I think. um Whatever happened to the Man of Tomorrow, right. um, yeah. I think is also f- a fantastic read, but I think ne- needs a little bit of Silver Age knowledge to go into. I mean, it's clearly like like a one and done, yeah, you know. But I think you'll appreciate it if you know what like the Lex Brainiac team up is, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's yeah, been yeah, done yeah. over and over and over again throughout the Silver Age and stuff like that, right? Right. But yeah, it's a terrific one, and the Jungle Line, which is a team up with Swamp Thing, also mm-hmm. terrific. Fantastic yep. from the 80s, also. Uh, any other ones before we sign off? Anybody want to do All Star really quick? We talked about it. <laughs> sure. Grant Morrison and Frank Quietly decided to do a 12 issue miniseries called All Star Superman. And I do think it's a wonderful story. I, I do enjoy it quite a bit. But I do also feel like it's one of those that if you have some frame of reference before you go into it, I mean, you can have no frame of reference for Superman and still enjoy it. But I think there's a, little, a lot of nods to things that were done even in the Silver Age or throughout Superman's history that work really well. Like, for example, if you saw, you saw Jimmy Olsen putting on a dress, it might not really resonate with you as to why he's doing that. <laughs> but if you've ever read any given issue or a handful of issues of um, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, it makes much more sense <laughs> to you. Right. right. Um, same thing as if you've never read, um, there's a Silver Age story about Superman going against like Hercules and some other um, characters of myth. Atlas. Right. And Atlas, yeah. thank you. That was the other one I couldn't think of. That sort of is 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 done in this as well. But overall, it's just it's it's a Superman story that this that tries to give you the best of Superman, hence the name All Star Superman. And I think uh, Grant Morrison does a fantastic job with it. Um, most of the depictions of all, the, I, I'd say, all the characters that are in it, you know, your typical, you know, Superman supporting cast is in it: Lois and Jimmy and Perry, uh, the Kents, um, yeah. you know. He does the best he you know the best he can with with loading it with as much Superman love as he possibly can. Yeah, so it's great. The pitch mm-hmm. I give everybody for it is, um, it's interesting how Morrison goes the other way. Instead of everybody who has sort of the temptation to take powers away from Superman to make an interesting story, he loads him up and and mm-hmm. he puts him in a situation where he gets oversaturated with sunlight to the point that like his own powers are killing his body. And mm-hmm. so, so Superman is dying and it's basically like, what is Superman going to do to save the world? Bef- like while the clock is ticking now, like what's yeah. he going to do to save the world before, before he dies. And it's a terrific story. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say enough good things about it. Yep. Yeah, it's good stuff. As I know you guys too, because I know we all love it. It's fantastic. Oh, yeah. so, so, okay. So there are some, um, you know, classic Superman reading for you guys if you guys want to jump in. And we will have some more uh, deep pulls in part two when we come back next week. So as always, we will post links and examples to everything we talk about on letmenowhowitis.com. Just please remember to like us and follow us on social media. And we will see you next week for part two. 